No. No, I don't want to talk about <laughs> Finding. I'll talk about backlash. Hey guys, welcome to Smite Talk Wrestling Reviews. I'm your host, Boise, and let's get on with Backlash 2018. God, Backlash is a bad pay per view. Bad pay per view. Let's start off with probably the best match of the night the Intercontinental Championship match where we had the champions, Seth Rollins. I was about to say The Miz because I'm so used to The Miz being the Intercontinental Champion, taking on the challenger, The Miz. And. It was the best match of the night. Seth has been absolutely killing it as the Intercontinental Champion. He's had top-notch matches after top-notch match. And The Miz was no difference. This match altogether, both men just seemed brilliant. It, it, and I was like, this is a great start to the match. This is a great start to the pay-per-view. I'm happy to see this. Um, and then... You know, Seth wins, and the selling from both guys was fantastic. Every time Seth injured his leg, the Miz tried to use the figure four, which was brilliant. And it just it was just like, how is Seth gonna win? Is he gonna win? The Miz was absolutely cunning throughout the match, and his in-ring skills were just brilliant. Seth did manage to get the win. He is still the Intercontinental Champion. I can't wait to see what's next for him as the Intercontinental Champion, and I can't wait to see what's next for The Miz, because it's just, that's now finally over. The Intercontinental stuff now is over for The Miz, but what is next for him in SmackDown Live? I cannot wait to see, but my God, best way to start the show. Unfortunately, it was the best thing of the show. Next up we have the Raw Women's Title Match and I'm literally going to say this, this was this one of the worst women's matches I have seen in some time. But saying that, I will talk about the SmackDown one later and that was bad as well. But this, the Raw Women's Match was nonsensical. Um, Alexa Bliss, who I expect to have really good matches, and Nia Jax's momentum since she's turned face has been really good, yet it just felt really flat. It felt worse than the WrestleMania match, which was nothing special in the first place. This was worse. Um, Nia Jax trying to do high fly moves which made no sense at all she kept on getting caught which helped Alexa Bliss it just felt like Nia Jax was on was just like oh I could if I just pull off one high fly move I will win it and I was like no just a Samoa jump and you've won it like you've done every other match why are you trying to change it up it makes no sense uh, Alexa Bliss's performance again I don't, I don't know if it was Nia or if it was Alexa, but it just felt like something was off between both of them. Uh, after the match, apparently, uh, a report came out saying Alexa Bliss did injure herself during the match. That could explain some stuff during the match, like it, why it was so poor. But yeah, Nia Jax did win. Simone dropped. Surprise, surprise, she won it. Uh, but she did sell off a, a promo after the match with Renee Young about bullying and all this. Like, I understand this is Nia's new thing. She's against bullying and all this because she's been bullied for being different. But my God, you know, I think there's a, part, a, play, a time and a place, but not after a match like Backlash. You should do it at the post-show of Backlash or something like that. That's when that interview should have been done, not then. But yeah, it, it was poor, very poor. Bailey Extreme Rules poor. Next up we had the United States Championship match where we had Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy being the United States Champion and Randy Orton being the number one contender. And how was it? It was mediocre. It was basic at best. Um, for a match which we, where we were like, well we hadn't seen a fight one on one for 10 years. This could be really interesting. And it wasn't. It wasn't interesting at all. It was paint by numbers kind of match, you know, each one countered, Jeff did his, his moves, Randy did his moves, there was nearly an RKO, there was nearly, you know, side effects, there was all sorts of different, you know, and I was like, well, Jeff's going to win this, you know, in some way, and he did, he won it, he won it with, you know, with a swan tom, which is, you know, and that was it, and I was kind of like, 
Are we going to see an RKO out of nowhere now? Are we going to see that? No, no. And that was it. Very basic, very dull kind of match and very paint by numbers. It was very safe for both men. Disappointing. It could have been really good and I was expecting more. After that we did get an Elias t uh, concert in some way and I just did it didn't make sense. Elias was trying to play, he got interrupted by New Day, then New Day got interrupted by Rusev Day, then Elias tried to play and he got interrupted by No Way Jose, then he tried to play again and then Bobby Roode used a glorious DDT on him and that was it. And then the Fiesta started again. It was nonsensical, it was stupid and I was like what? What was the point? You could have put that in a Raw episode, you know, with Raw superstars. But no, they wanted to just, I think they just wanted New Day there just to get some New Day merch. I think they, they wanted No Way Jose to have a spotlight as well. And I think they wanted to continue the rivalry between the Bobby Roo, all in one segment was a bit too much. But the funny bit was, uh, Aiden English did try to join the conga line. That was probably the best bit of that whole segment. This moves us on to Daniel Bryan taking on Big Cass and but Daniel Bryan won. He put looked in the yes lock, Daniel won, and then Big Cass decided to beat the crap out of him after the match. That means we're gonna still continue with Big Cass and Daniel Bryan, you know, the rivalry no one asked for. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so where we've got that already made rivalry between Daniel Bryan and The Miz. Nope, we're not going to see that. We're going to continue seeing Daniel Bryan versus Big Cat in some way. I'm pretty damn sure. But yeah, it was pointless. It was a pointless match. And yeah, Daniel Bryan got the win. We knew he was going to get the win. Next up we had the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match where we had the champion Carmella taking on number one contender, Charlotte Flair. Woo! That is the worst woo ever. Um, it was the worst match of the night. It was terrible. Um, and it was like watching a top athlete having to lower her performance for someone who, who isn't ready for this level. Um, the booking was, they made the booking towards it for the last couple of weeks perfect. Carmella has been teaming up with the Iconics. Everyone's thinking the Iconics will get involved. There's no way Carmella can win clean right now. She's not ready for that. What do WWE do? They book it where Carmella wins clean. Am I missing something here? Am I am I deliberately missing something here? Is WWE just trying to make fans go, well, I don't really want to pay for the subscription anymore. I don't want to watch SmackDown and Raw anymore because it makes no logical sense. That's what it feels like. It's like the booking team were like, oh, well, we know Charlotte's the best women wrestler we have in the company, but we're going to have a loose clean to Carmella, someone who hasn't actually performed well in months and only her best bits have been last couple of weeks with the Iconics but no we'll have her loose clean we'll have her it makes no sense I'm ranting because it annoys me it annoys me that much I'm starting to rant but yeah worst match of the night stupid booking decisions don't understand it next up was the WWE Championship match yeah the WWE Championship match was the third to last match of the night the third to last match. You know, the title Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Triple H, all those guys fought for is not even worthy to be the main event of a backlash pay-per-view. Wow. Wow. Well done, Vince. That's brilliant. That's just exactly what we want. So, the match was a non-DQ match where we had the champion AJ Styles taking on the challenger and number one contender. Shinsuke Nakamura and I'm gonna give some praise here. It was a better match than what we got at the Greatest Royal Rumble and it was better than what we got at WrestleMania, but the ending was bloody stupid. So here's how it goes. You have a non-disqualification match, the referee counts to 10 while both men are on the floor, the match ends in no victor. 
Makes no sense. There's no disqualification. They could take their time. But the referee is like, no, no, no. They've kicked each other in the balls too many times. That's it. End of match. But the match itself was good. And the fans everywhere, you could see it in the crowd, were annoyed as hell with this decision making. It was just was stupid. What's the point of having a non-DQ match when the referee is going to end it? in that way that was absolutely stupid on WWE booking and what's the point of having the WWE title being defended on backlash when it's not going to be the main event again what is Vince thinking this is stupid 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 booking but my god the match itself was great until the end so thank you, thank you WWE, you just show them that the WWE title means nothing anymore compared to that stupid jammy dodger belt which we barely see anyway, thank you. Next up we had a tag team match, it wasn't for tag team titles, no, it was just Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman taking on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and it's the same match which we got two weeks ago same kind of things happened, but according to the records, Bobby Roode, Bobby Roode, Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman won by pinning Kevin Owens. But, problem is, Kevin Owens was not the legal man. So how did they win a match when they didn't pin the legal man? Makes no sense. The match itself was exactly as I expected it. You're going to give, you know, Braun all the props he is so over right now and that's great Bobby Lashley's kind of using that to help himself um, and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn have great heels they make it fun but the booking was terrible again it was crap Kevin Owens Sami Zayn tried to run away from the match uh, Kevin Owens like we're not doing that we're gonna fight uh, Sami threw him in the ring Kevin got pinned it was absolutely nonsensical Sami got Finally got caught and then beaten up as well. But Kevin only got beaten up again by Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman. Which makes no sense. How does that work? Kevin did nothing heelish throughout that match. He was actually playing more of a bit like a baby face than the baby faces were playing it. It Again, nonsensical booking. It, it, it was just terrible. I was joking. I was joking in my predictions video when I said Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe were going to be the main event. I was joking. I, I didn't mean it. Why did you listen, Vince? So we had Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe as the main event for Backlash. A match for no title, no nothing. It was just a match because Samoa Joe challenged Roman Reigns. And how was it? It was a typical Roman Reigns match, which is going to make the fans even hate him even more. Well done, Vince. You're doing exactly what you don't want to do. You know the same thing you did with Bobby Lashley before you left to go to TNA? You're doing with Roman Reigns. You're making him... You're booking him poorly. And the guy, the guy is a good wrestler. I'm not taking anything away. People will say Roman's a bad wrestler. He's not. He's actually a good wrestler. But when you're putting him in matches like this, this is stupid. So what? This is how we started. We had Samoa Joe put Roman Reigns through a table before the ring, before the bell went. So that's great. Okay. Joe has a clear advantage right now. Joe was controlling the match 90% of the time. And what happens? Roman Reigns still wins with a spear. Because he does. He's now the new Superman of WWE. He's the new... It's just now that the fans just don't want to see it. No one wanted to see Roman Reigns win. There's no there's no need for him to win. So, it again, booking decisions. You have a guy like Samoa Joe where the fans are actually behind him. He's a good heel. He's, he's, he's actually, my skills are brilliant. He's in-ring... Technical skills are brilliant, yet you have Roman Reigns go over on him after that. that just You just literally buried Samoa Joe in one match again. Luckily enough, Joe is a brilliant athlete and a great mic skills will get him out of that. 
But my God, Vince, what was that all about? No one wanted to see Roman Reigns' hand be lifted at the end of the night. And there you go, guys. That was Backlash for you. Like I said, it was the worst pay-per-view I've seen in some time. And my God, it was stupid. It was the dumbest pay-per-view I've seen in, in a long, long time. Uh, the bookings were terrible. The matches were not well performed. The best match of the night was the first match of the night. The WWE title should have been the main event because it's the WWE title and it's on a freaking pay-per-view. It makes no logical sense. Roman Reigns is not the main event of the pay-per-view. He wasn't the main event. The biggest match of the whole night for a lot of fans was Nakamura versus AJ Styles. This was meant to be the match where we finally see the blowout between the two of them. That, but no, we're going to continue with that. And there you go, guys. That's my rants of Backlash. I do apologise. I do apologise. I'm usually a lot more positive in these videos, but it was it was so bad. It's just... What did you guys think? What did you guys think of Backlash this, this time around? Did you think it was good? Doubt it. Do you think it was bad? Most likely. Put it in the comments below. If you do like my video, please like and subscribe. You can follow me on the old Twitter. I'm at Boise88. And you can follow the channel itself at Smack Talk YouTube. That's you and Tube. And I'll see you guys next time on Smack Talk Wrestling Reviews.